Good evening and welcome to all of you gathered here to our Saturday evening prayer. And it's good to see so many of you joining us. But first we light a simple light and if you have a candle handy, why not light it so that together we form a circle of light in this beautiful cathedral of God, the landscape. We light this light this evening and we give thanks to God for friendship. And I offer our evening prayer for all of your intentions, plus all our many friends on social media, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, Facebook, Google, and for the many who support us in their prayers. And we remember those coming tomorrow to our service, our celebration here for the festival of Imbolc, the ancient Celtic festival, also known as Candlemas Day. So welcome to this time of celebration. Let us be still and just relax into the presence of God. And as we take a deep breath, we breathe in the very breaths of the divine masculine and feminine energy of God, a God who has many names, Lord Vishnu, Ganesh, Krishna, Yahweh, Allah, Jehovah, the creator, the source, I am presence, the one who is. We begin our Saturday evening prayer with the prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly Mother, and all the great masters, and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Saturday evening we commune with the angel of eternal life saying, angel of eternal life, descend upon me and give eternal life to my spirit. As these words are said, you contemplate union with the current ocean of thought of the superior planets and gains power to overcome the sphere of gravitation of earthly currents of thought. And just relax. And I'm guided just to read a prayer from this beautiful book of prayers. It's called Favorite Prayers, chosen by people from all walks of life. And before we went live, I was guided to read this. It's by Harold Wright, a retired Thatcher. Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from the riverside which flowed be of sin, the double cure, cleanse me from its guilt and power. Amen. and coming to this beautiful little book by Thich Nahan, another great spiritual teacher. We read a beautiful reflection on the life of miracles. As we sit down next to a stream, we can listen to its laughter and watch its sparkling waters, noticing the pebbles glistening and the fresh green plants nearby and we may be overcome with happiness. We are one with the stream's freshness, purity and clarity. But in just an instant, we may find we've had enough. Our heart is troubled and we think of other things. We are no longer at one with the stream. It is of no use to sit in a peaceful forest if our mind is lost in the city. When we live with a child or a friend, their freshness and warmth can relax us. But if our heart is not with them, 
their precious presence is neglected and they no longer exist. We must be aware of them to appreciate their value, to allow them to be our happiness. If, through carelessness and forgetfulness, we become dissatisfied with them and begin asking too much of them, or reprimanding them, we will lose them. Only after they are gone will we realize their preciousness and feel regret. But once they are gone, all our regrets are in vain. <clears throat> And from the Unitarian Church, we read this beautiful prayer, which we share every Sunday morning when we join up with our brother and sisters of the Unitar Unitarian Chapel in Candle in Cumbria. Spirit of life, come unto me. Sing in my heart all the stirrings of compassion. Blow in the wind, rise in the sea. Move in the hand, giving life and shape and just of justice. Roots hold me close, wings set me free. Spirit of life, come to me, come to me. And now <clears throat> a reflection from, for praying out loud interfaith prayers for public occasions by L. Annie Forrester. And her theme, let me tell you who we are. Spirit of ages, creator of life and love, whose names and attributes are infinite, knowable and unknown. O Spirit, hear our prayer. Our names too are many, let me tell you who we are. We are those who are innocent and those who are wise. We are those who are proud and those who are humble. We are those who are accepted and those who are shunned without understanding why. We are those who love life and those who are fearful and confused. We are those who know abundance and those who know scarcity. We are inheritors of the past and architects of the future. We are givers and we are receivers. We are larger than our skins and smaller than our egos. We are diversity incarnate, dressed in all the glorious hues of ethnicity and all the fascinating textures of genetics. We are the harvests of creation, related by our humanity and separated only by our own voices. We seek a common language, a language of love. <clears throat> Ancient one, it is important to know us in our rich diversity, for we do struggle to know ourselves and one another. Wise one, it is important to know us in our myriad similarities, for we are forgetful and need reminding. Dear one, it is important to know us in our many disguises, for we need but one thing. Help us to love, and help us to know we are worthy of love, and in this we are as one. Amen. <clears throat> and coming now to the Psalms of the Old Testament Bible, we read from Psalms now by Leslie Brandt. <clears throat> and for some reason or another, I'm guided to read 58, but I hope I haven't read it yesterday. But if I have, I'm meant to do it again. Psalm 58. My heart grieves, O Lord, over the leaders of this world who play God with the lives of men. With the clever twisting of half-truths, they gather followers into their folds and manipulate them, into carrying out their purposes. They blind men to personal conscience and responsibility and enslave them to the wishes 
and ambitions of the state. Then there are starry-eyed mystics who assume they are God's special gift to mankind and to, through devious tricks or inscrutable gifts, create their little cults of loyal disciples. You shall have the last word, O God, and those who take your place or who stand in your way as you seek to draw men to yourself will be subjected to your judgments. You are my God, almighty and eternal. Forbid, O God, that I should ever turn from you to follow the false shepherds of this world. So let us just listen to our heart now. We have read plenty, and sometimes it's important to have a period of silence and allow the Spirit of God speak to our heart. Coming now to the beautiful book, New Monasticism for Everyday People, and we read our little section this evening, and it's themed Spiritual Journey, Travellers for Life. Everyone is on a journey from the womb to the tomb. To cease to move is to die. Our destiny is not to hold on to what we have. There is no permanent city for us here on earth. Our own bodies teach us this truth. It is said that we make a new liver every six weeks, a new skeleton every three months, a new stomach every five days, a new skin every month. Our bodies are 99 0.99% empty space, a bunch of atoms whirling around. We do not cease to change, to move any day of our lives. The purpose of life is to travel towards our destiny, to the heart of human good, to the heart of God. What then are you, human life? You are the road to life, not life itself. You are a real road, but not a level one. Long for some, short for others. Broad for some, narrow for others. Joyful for some, sad for others. For all alike, fleeting and irrevocable. A road is what you are, a road, but you are not clear to all. Many see you, and few understand you to be a road. For you are so wily and enticing that few know you are a road. Therefore you are to be questioned, but not believed and given bail. You are to be traversed, but not inhabited, for no one dwells on a road, but travels it so that those who walk upon the road may dwell in their homeland. And that's by Columbanus. And now, my dear friends, we come to our evening intercessions, where we bring one another and the needs of our world. And coming from the Book of Peace Prayers from the World's Religions, by Roger Granger we read for sharing. In Psalm 37 verse 21 we read the righteous give generously and for, from Zoroastrianism we read inspire us O wise Lord to live in mutual understanding and trust and peace. We are brothers and sisters all belonging to one great human family 
and we are children of one father, mother. Thou, O wise Lord, teach us to live as comrades, all in willing fellowship and loving fraternity, in brotherly and sisterly helpfulness and cooperation. From the Baha'i we read, Gladden our hearts through the fragrance of your love. Brighten our eye through the light of your guidance. Delight our ears through the melody of your work and shelter us all in the stronghold of your providence. For you have created all humanity and have decreed that we shall all belong to the same household. <clears throat> and coming to the Christian tradition, we read, we have a high priest able to sympathize with us in our weaknesses, and one who, because of his likeness to us, has been tempted in every way, but did not sin. Let us pray to the cosmic Christ, to Jesus. Show us your mercy and compassion. Lord, for the joy which lay in the future, you willingly went to the cross. Make us share your death, that we may also share your joy. Show us your mercy and compassion. Lord, you said, let any man who thirsts come to me and drink. Give your spirit now to those who thirst for you. Show us your mercy and compassion. You sent your disciples to preach the gospel of love to every nation. Bless those men and women who devote their lives to making known your love and light through their work as healers, therapists, preachers, and monastics of the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans. Show us your mercy and compassion. Help those in pain to know that our Heavenly Father, Mother God, and our earthly mother cares for them as they love us as their sons and daughters. Show us your love and compassion. And finally, from the Hindu Vedic hymn, we read, We pray for greater understanding of human interdependence. We pray for communities that are divided among themselves. We pray for groups of people of different racial or religious backgrounds living next to one another. We pray for all who seek to heal ancient wounds, and we pray for those still, who still cling to all bitterness. May God betide all people. May the sovereign rule the earth following the righteous paths. May all beings ever attain what is good, and may the worlds be prosperous and happy. And finally, from the Baha'i. Gladden our hearts through the fragrance of your love. Brighten our eyes through the light of your guidance. Delight our ears through the melody of your work. And shelter us all in the stronghold of your providence. For you have created all humanity and have decreed that we shall all belong to the same household. Amen. And now, just for a moment in silence, <clears throat> let us bring our own personal thoughts, worries, concerns, fears, and let us share them with the cosmic Christ, who is the physician of our soul. Or you may choose to share it with your own personal God, Goddess. evening when we started our evening prayers 
We offered our evening prayer for all our friends on social media. For Catherine and Caroline on the Isle of Wight. For Brother Skip and Thomas Aquinas Q on Google Hangouts. For the many kind souls who respond to our videos that we upload from evening and morning prayer and who offer us so much tangible support through their love. For our friends on LinkedIn, on Facebook and Twitter. For the many who email us each day for prayer. And I remember again this evening Eric and his dear friend Editha, who was buried last week and her daughter Anne, who's 20. We remember our brother Brian and his dear friend. That she would be strong. She hurt her back. I've just missed, misplaced her name for the moment, but brother Brian will know who it is. A nurse who really suffered pain and who needs all the prayer we can give. For Brother Liam and his ministry in London with the homeless. For dear Sister Jane, who battles so much with adrenal fatigue in Coventry. For our dear, dearly beloved Miriam in New Zealand, who struggles with depression as I do. And a kind soul who loves God's little creatures. For Eleanor and Elizabeth in Philadelphia. For dear brother Paul, the founder of the Franciscan Hermits and all the members of that good community. We pray for Sister Elaine in Peter Lee in Durham. For dear Nancy, who's an oblate novice in training. For Pamela in California with Mary. And we remember Sister Jacqueline in Idaho and her family. We pray for our friend, little baby Louis. We remember this evening, dear Olivia, brother Murray, Rob and Paul. And we pray for brother Paul's family. We remember Diane in Lee, Anastasia in St. Helens with our dear sister Jan. We remember our dear friend Jane in Ormskirk, who's been unwell with a chest infection and hopes she's well enough to join us tomorrow. For Pat and Adrian in Storth and for Delcy and Russell. We remember the many good souls who have held us in their heart and in their prayer when we were being tested. But we pray for the many who've come and gone in our community we pray especially for those who sadly, whose ego got in the way of their heart and who chose to listen to their ego that led them astray of their chosen path. And we bless them and we will never forget them, especially Richard, Sue and Lisa. We pray this evening for all religious leaders who work for interfaith, for our politicians, and I pray a prayer of gratitude to God that prayers were answered that put a temporary stop on President Donald Trump's new ruling of blocking all persons from the seven named countries, Muslim countries, for 90 days. But thankfully a federal judge in Seattle overruled what he'd done, saying that it was unconstitutional. So we pray that prayers were answered and we trust, we trust that the power of prayer will break down all walls that divide us, the walls that Israel built to stop the Palestinians coming into Israel. For the intended wall that President Trump intense building to separate Mexico from America and from the many kind souls, God's children, who still have bricked walls in their heart and who are unwilling to listen to that lovely voice, a voice of love. We pray for the many who are locked in a mindset of fear, whose lives are troubled, for those who've lost hope, 
and who are in need of hope. And we pray tonight for the little ones, the children of God, the innocent, led astray by those who groom them on the internet, who are paedophiles. We pray for them because they too are a child of God. We pray for those who exploit our young people with drugs and false promises and turn them into modern day slaves. We pray for those who hijack our young people subtly into prostitution and the sex industry. And finally, we remember our servicemen and women who having returned from the front line, many find difficulty in living in Civvy Street, where they turn to drugs and alcohol and always end up homeless because they can't cope with the demons and the nightmares. We pray for them and their families and all those struggling with mental health issues and physical disabilities around the world. So let us now be still and bring to this table of love every child of God, be they Catholic, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, Sikh, Hare Krishna, Jehovah, Baptist, Jew, Muslim, Baha'i, labels. God is not interested in our labels. God only is interested in our heart, that we cease giving lip service to God and that we allow the light of love, God's love, penetrate those brick walls of fear, low self-worth, low self-esteem, so that we can hear that voice saying, I called you by your name, you are mine. Let us hear that voice now. And we pray the beautiful prayer, the Lord's Prayer, from this lovely book, Prayers from the Cosmos. And it's a, excuse me, it's a possible new translation from the Aramaic. O birther, father, mother of the cosmos, focus your light within us, make it useful. Create your reign of unity now your one desire then acts with ours, as in all light, so as in all form. Grant what we need each day in bread and insight. Loose the cords of mistakes binding us, as we release the strands we hold of others' guilt. Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back. From you is born all ruling will, the power and the life to do, the song that beautifies all from age to age it renews. Truly power to these statements. May they be the ground from which all my actions grow. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful translation of the Lord's Prayer? And finally, coming to our little book of Celtic prayers from Iona, we read, bear with me. Got you. Right. Now. I lie down this night with God, and God lies down with me. I lie down this night with Christ, and Christ will lie down with me. I lie down this night with the Spirit, and the Spirit will lie down with me. The tree of my love will be lying down with me. Nor shall sin or sin shadow lie down with me. I lie down this night with God, and God will lie down with me. So the blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky, on those we love this night, and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon, and the animal kingdom, 
be in your heart now and forevermore. Amen. And as I come to blow out this light, I thank the Lord Christ in the presence of all the great spiritual teachers of all faiths, in the presence of all the holy men and women from the beginning of time, who heard the call of God, who surrendered their heart, who took up their cross daily, and who embraced every child of God. We thank this God, this loving God, for touching you too and filling your life with God's peace. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom. Inshallah, paxet bonum, om shanti. Solo di caritas, salam alaikum. And may the peace of all that is sacred to you reawaken in your heart that you are loved by God, that you are a child of God, and that you are a co-creator of the divine. So I wish you all a blessed evening and I look forward to your company again soon. Take care.